Dr. Perry, man, we talk a lot on this station about, you know, knowing your history. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the younger generation and millennials really care about, or do you think that they will even know that they have to know their history? Well, there have been some changes in what we found. Some of the research has shown that actually more educated uh, African Americans and those who are in a higher social status are more likely to know more about their history um, and to value it than those who do not share that same uh, social economic status. So it's about which, economics. Well, in, to a certain degree. And I was really surprised by that. But when you look at neighborhoods and how they're now isolated, right. often people who are uh, stuck in a certain locale mm -hmm. are not getting that exposure to people who were once poor like them but are now doctors, lawyers, and successful. They're not seeing that, so they're becoming more isolated. So they don't get the same exposure to our history and values like we used to when neighborhoods were more integrated by class, mm -hmm. right, but right. more segregated by race. Right, 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 right. Because a lot of, you know, because we talk about it a lot and, you know, we, we, we you know, we, we talk about the excuses that, you know, may use. And, and, and we, we you're talking about, you know, the economic, you know, separation in that. But from an economic perspective, if you want it, right, you could still go to the library. You know, there's a lot of, you know, kids that have phones that can Google, you know. So knowing your history and the access to it. Is it more of I don't have the access to it or I don't care about it? I need people who are telling me that it's important. Okay, got And it. people who are showing those examples. And mm -hmm. sometimes in programs, I sit around a lot of tables. They either believe, they believe it's an either or. Mm -hmm. Either you bring people in who have no shared experience with young people because they're quote-unquote successful, or you bring people in who only have that experience and so – that young people cannot see the trajectory to where I can get out of my situation. Right, right. And so they don't the, have any exposure. Right. right. And so, but you need to have both types of competence. And that's where um, we sometimes fall short. But when they see examples of people who have been where they have been or have shared some sort of experience, because as long as I believe for most of us, if we're African American, mm -hmm. we have been exposed to racism in, in our families because we value the family unit. We don't necessarily have the um, luxury of just divorcing ourselves from our family who are still in the same situations that maybe we came out of. Who should be telling me that it's important, right? Who, should, who is, is it the community? Is it the ones who've made it out of the community? Is it the parent? Who should be responsible for telling the younger generation or those who are impoverished, you know, that knowing your history is important? We all should be involved in that conversation. And the way we've done it in our nonprofit is I brought together – people with diverse experiences. So we have employees, job coaches, educators who are pastors. We have some who are not pastors. We have uh, facilitators and mentors who are parents that went through the juvenile justice system. Mm -hmm. And so they can mentor other parents who are in that situation right now. Um, in our workforce development programs, we have formerly incarcerated um, individuals who work as recruiters to explain that trajectory. And we look at it as a village. So mm -hmm. it's not an either or. Right. So when individuals come through their doors, they touch the mentor all the way up to Dr. P mm -hmm. because we call it the village model. And okay. so we get in a circle and all these di diverse experiences, we put a circle around that person so that no matter what their need or what the exposure may be, they have that access to that resource. So I don't look at it as of what someone doesn't have or what they didn't do or what they don't know, but what have they had access to. And for me, what we found to be successful is when we put the access there, the opportunity so that you can see it, and we also show that certain certain norms to be smart to, and there are nine different types of intelligences. So we have to remember that as to not just force one over the other, but when it's okay to be good at what you do, and it's okay to be nice and kind to others, and that this is a family. Mm -hmm. And then bring that cultural piece in where these are not new problems. We have done it before. You have the strength to do it. Here are the people to help you. Then the person's comp confidence comes to the table. Right. And those three core domains are what make programs successful. If you have a question or a comment for Dr. Tracy Perryman, she's here, 313-209-9000. Um,